the outlaws. And he was in Las Vegas the night Tupac was shot. Do you remember the first time you met Tupac? I do remember my earliest memories of us being kids and hopping the train and going to school by ourselves, man, 9, 10. Pac maybe was about 12, 13. We would put on these little these little shows for the family, and, and whether we was impersonating Run DMC, a new edition, and Pac was always just a creative thinker. You know, whether we was emulating the A-Team, he would always direct the scenes, and <laughs> you know, he just always had a vision for that kind of thing, man. So at a very young age, you could see he had it. Whether it was music or acting or, you know, writing or whatever the case may be, you know yeah. what I mean? He definitely had it. But at that point, we were, we were so young, we was just dreaming. And, and what was your relationship like with Afeni? I grew to really love her and love to listen to her tell stories. She would tell us stories about the, the Panther days, and I would love to just listen to her. And eventually became a, a hero of mine because she was a fighter and, and a revolutionary. Afeni used to make Pac read the Wall Street Journal, and, you know, uh, uh, intelligence was always stressed. Now, Edie, you actually took the trip with him to Las Vegas. Yeah, a lot of the industry was going to be there. It was a Tyson fight. And he was close to Mike Tyson also. Yeah, Tyson asked him for a song, and, and Pac went in the studio and came up with something brand new for him. We're going to take the investigation to Las Vegas, and I think it'll be so much more pronounced if you could consider coming with me, because you have a unique perspective we're trying to get this right, man. If it was anybody else in here asking me these questions, they might get shown the door. But in an effort to give his mother the closure that, you know, she deserves, even if she's not here, and it'd be my honor and pleasure. Man, this is the days of for real. There's a bunch of bodies buried out here. <laughs> What was Tupac's mindset as you all were going to Las Vegas? You know, Vegas is, is, is a playground for grown-ups, so, you know, he was looking forward to getting to the crap table. OK. And most Mike Tyson fights pretty short, so, you know, I think it was more about, you know, seeing Mike and connecting with Mike as opposed to actually seeing the fight. Then Mike know that he was there to support him. Right. OK. What kind of things did y'all talk about? Man, we were just riding and listening to music, man. You know, having a good time, you know, enjoying some herbal refreshments, and uh, just enjoying the trip to Vegas, man. By the time of the Mike Tyson fight, Tupac had been working with Suge Knight's Death Row Records for almost a year. The plan was for them to attend the Mike Tyson fight together and then head over to Suge's Las Vegas Club 662. Mike Tyson understood that Tupac knew his life, could tell the truth about who he was, and can spit it into that microphone and amplify it to the world. There was no doubt that Mike Tyson and Tupac forged a connection. They're both on stage, and they're both saying angry, powerful, intelligent things that are oblivious to the white order in society, that they don't mind challenging the dominant viewpoint about who black men are. I was working at a recording studio in North Hollywood. We got a call saying that Tupac wanted to come in and record a song for the Mike Tyson fight called uh, Let's Get It On. Right, left, then left, right, I seen him stutter, what? He didn't duck and got stuck with your uppercut. He was really excited. You could tell just by the things that he was saying in the lyrics. At the end of the night, after we finished everything up, Tupac came up to me and he said, hey, when we leave, mix the songs. Someone's going to come from death row, going to pick it up at midnight, and then they're going to ship it out to Vegas. He's like, I'm on my way now. The last thing that Tupac said to me was, hey, thanks for everything. I'll come back on Sunday, and we'll work together again. I did not see him again. When Mike Tyson was fighting in Las Vegas in the 90s, it was an experience. It was an event. Biggest audience, biggest personalities, Magic Johnson, Sylvester Stallone, whoever it may be, but also hip hop wanted to be there. Six o'clock, Tupac arrives in Vegas, goes down to gamble, heads to the Tyson fight. At 8.39, Tyson knocks out Selden in one minute and 49 seconds. 